Thank you, dear God, that we recognize today that all of our help comes from you. Thank you that you've been our helper in ages past. Because you helped us before, we stand now ready to receive help again. Fill us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today is the first Sunday, and so we are beginning, and I don't the first Sunday, it is the very first of the month, and so we are beginning afresh today, this month, uh, with a new theme, and our new theme will be New Beginnings, and we'll be talking about this idea for the rest of this month, New Beginnings. I want to... Uh, Go back to the text that was read earlier, First uh, Corinthians, Second uh, Corinthians chapter five, Second Corinthians chapter five. And again, you saw or heard verse seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become brand new. I have quoted that text and read that text often over the years, and. I will confess that usually I stop at that point. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become brand new. And we often stop right there. But the next verse says, And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, who has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. As we enter into this idea of new beginning this month, I want to uh, uh, begin with an old statement and say to you that new beginnings is really a, rec a reconciliation is really about reconciliation. New beginnings, my friends, is really about reconciliation. If you want to have a new beginning, I want to suggest that you read the rest of this and think about reconciliation. We are comfortable, for the most part, with the definition of reconciliation meaning to bring two together. We talk about being reconciled, uh, two parties that were feuding, being reconciled. They, they settled their differences and they came together. And I want to suggest to you that if I'm reading this text right, New Beginnings really is about reconciliation. For the writer here, Paul writes and says that if any man be in Christ, he is a... Now, that sounds good. But he also says, verse 18, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So first of all, a reconciliation of ourselves to God. Hold back the one. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. If any man be in Christ, if you want to be reconciled, we got to think about being reconciled back to God. A new creature is one that comes back to God. Listen. God loved you so much that he saved you. Just look at somebody and tell them, God loved you so much that he saved you. The writer says, uh, John 3.16, uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved you so much that he wanted to reconcile you back to him and so he sent his son Jesus. Now, if I left right now, that's preaching right there. That God loved you so much 
when he saved you. And if God saved you, he will save your neighbor. If God saved you out of some stuff, he will save your neighbor. That's going to be important in just a minute. If God saved you, he'll save your neighbor. Amen. If God reconciled you back to himself, he wants to reconcile your neighbor back to himself. Amen. Don't you for a minute allow the enemy to cause you to believe that you're the only one God wanted to save. Yeah. Matter of fact, don't you let the enemy convince you for a minute that you're the only one saved. Y'all right. right. ain't saying nothing. Because we, we sometimes get caught up in that idea that there is nobody doing right, no, not one. I am the only one that's on my way to heaven. Jesus, why don't you save those four? Jesus, they, they, they need you more than ever. They need you now. Yes, they do. And so do you. <clears throat> God loved you so much that he reconciled you back to him. Now listen, New Beginnings is really about reconciling ourselves back to God, but listen, it's also about recon reconciliation of ourselves to ourselves. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a New Listen, what that says to me is this. I've got to get right with myself. God loved you so much that he saved you. He loved you so much that he forgave you all the stuff that you were guilty of. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins, go on, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, brothers and sisters, new beginnings requires that we reconcile ourselves to ourselves. And to me, that simply means that if God forgave you, you've got to forgive yourself. I'm talking to one or two folk in here. One or two of us in here done some stuff in our lifetime. You have done some stuff. Before you were saved, you did some stuff. And some of us did some stuff after we were saved. Listen, and we've got some stuff in our lives that we are ashamed of. But listen, God forgave you now you got to forgive yourself. Now I want to talk to just one or two folk in here. You're struggling with a new beginning because you are still, you still have not forgiven yourself. I want you to think about it for a minute. I want you to tell nobody. But I want you to think about the worst thing you've done. Now listen, some of you thought about real quick when some stuff went through your head, and you had to pick which one of them was the worst. <laughs> but listen, part of the reason why it came up so quickly to you is because you're still struggling with forgiving yourself. You're still struggling with forgiving yourself. The Lord has long time ago forgiven you and wiped it out. <coughs> New beginnings requires that we reconcile ourselves to ourselves. We've got to look at ourselves and speak to ourselves and tell ourselves if God has forgiven you, then I'm going to forgive you. Before I get too far, if you can forgive yourself, then you can better forgive other folk. Yeah. Well, part of the reason why we struggle with the next point I'm going to bring up in just a second is because we do not, we have not gotten past this point. 
We are still struggling trying to get a new beginning with all the stuff that we have. So my brothers and my sisters, can I tell you to forgive yourself and stop living in condemnation. The enemy wants you to live in condemnation. But Paul writes to the Roman church and says, there is therefore, in, in chapter 8, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. He did not say there was not some stuff in your life you've done wrong. But what he said was, stop letting the devil condemn you for it. Allow the Holy Spirit to convict you to move away from that thing, but don't let the devil condemn you for what you've already done. You want a new beginning? Forgive yourself. Stop living in condemnation. New beginning, now listen, you can't get to this point until you get past the other two. New beginning is really a reconciliation of ourself to our neighbor. That hurts y'all. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Listen, when you look at your neighbor and you're still holding stuff against your neighbor, you cannot move to a place of new beginning. New beginnings requires a reconciliation of ourself to our neighbor. God loved you so much until he wants you to be at peace with your neighbor. Just look at somebody and say, I want to be at peace. God loved you so much until he wants you at peace with, his, with your neighbor. All things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us, he's given to you, the ministry of reconciliation. Just, just look at yourself for a moment and speak to yourself and tell yourself, I am a reconciler. What that means is God has given you the ministry of reconciliation. You are the one that ought to be bringing folk together. You are the one that ought to be bringing yourself together so that you can then bring yourself into harmony with your neighbor. Paul writes, if it be possible, as much as lies within you, live peaceably with all men. Listen to what he says. As much as lies within you, you live peacefully with all men. God Almighty. You want to have a new beginning? Challenge yourself to live at peace with all men. You want to have a new beginning? Challenge yourself to put up with some stuff so that you might live peaceably. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because you feel like it's my right to do this. But something, we're going to say it like this. Sometimes you've got to give up the right. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Well, see, sometimes, sometimes you can know. Look, let, let me give you a real quick, a real quick example of that. I'm driving down the road. I come to us. I, I see a stop sign for that fella. And there's no stop sign for me. But I see that fella going to go through the stop sign. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop if I can, and I will let him go on and run his stop sign. You know, you know why? Because I don't want to be injured. Can I tell you, is that, if that's true in driving, it is also true in life. Sometimes you've got to and let them pass on by. Because God has given you the ministry of reconciliation. Did y'all get that? I felt that in my spirit. I felt that. I felt that in my spirit. Sometimes you just gotta put the brakes on and allow them to be wrong as they want to be, but just let them go right on through. And guess what? Once they get through, then you can drive on down the road to toward your destination, or you can decide if you want to. Well, they got a stop sign. They better stop, and you're gonna crash right into them. And look, both of y'all now gonna be late. I've been late. Y'all got it. 
<laughs> God wants you to be at peace with your neighbor. As much as lies within you, live peacefully with your with all men. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Look at somebody and say, we have the ministry. Of reconciliation. Now listen. Years ago, there was there was a program on TV called Mission Impossible. Do I remember that? At the very beginning of the show, they had this music, and I, if I could sing that, y'all know the music. Y'all know it. Y'all imagine it. That music would come on, and there would be a tape recorder playing with the mission. At the, end of the, at the end of the recording, say, should you choose to accept it? In other words, I think it was Greg Morris, one of them. But anyway, he had to, they could decide whether or not they wanted to accept the mission. If they chose not to accept it, the, the tape self-destructed and went on, they would go on. He always accepted the mission of Mission Impossible. Listen, the ministry of reconciliation may seem impossible. But if you choose to accept it, I want to help you out. I want you this morning to think for a moment with me that God has given you the gift of reconciliation. It's up to you to accept it. God has given you the ability to allow this first day of March 2020 to be a day of new beginning for you. A day for you to start afresh. If you choose to accept it, I want to help you out. I pause for a moment to allow that to sink in. Because I don't want you to play with me. I don't want you to play with God. But I want you to seriously ask yourself, do I really want a new beginning? Before I go to the next slide, let me quickly tell you this story. There was a man who was sitting at the pool for 38 long years. Jesus came by and says to him, do you want to be made whole? The man replied, I have no one to put me in the pool. He missed the question altogether. The question wasn't whether or not anybody came with him. The question wasn't not whether they had a good family life. It wasn't about how much money he had. The question was very simple. Do you want to be made whole? Yeah. The question this morning is similar to that question. I'm looking at some folk this morning who struggle and struggle and struggle. Today can be your new beginning. I simply ask the question, do you want to accept the ministry of reconciliation. Do you want to accept the gift that God has given you of reconciliation? I submit that many of the things that we struggle with will change as we begin to reconcile ourselves to God, to ourselves, and to our fellow man. We will see a change in our lives. As we reconcile ourselves to God, to ourself, and to our fellow man, we will see a change in the way God operates in our life. He said one more time. As we reconcile ourselves to God, to ourselves, and to our fellow man, God will rain down blessings upon you. So how do we get there? First I want to tell you is, should you choose to accept this ministry of reconciliation? Should you choose to really go for a new beginning? The first thing I want to tell you is, trust God. You said, you did all that build up for that simple thing? That's all it is? That's all it is. Trust God. Look at somebody and say, trust God. 
trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Trust God's plan. Look at somebody and say, trust his plan. God's plan is that we all live together. Why did I know that? <laughs> In the words of Dr. King, we must learn to live together as brothers or we will certainly perish together as fools. My brothers and my sisters, I believe it is God's plan that we learn how to live together with one another and be reconciled to one another. Be brought, allow uh, God's plan to operate in your life. How do I know that? Listen, I believe that God has a power. Not only should we trust his plan, but trust his power. Trust his power to knit us together. Like Jonathan and David, they were knitted together. I believe if you trust God's plan and trust God's power, he will knit you together. Now watch this. I'm going to really bother somebody. Because I'm going to speak into your life. This morning, I'm going to tell you, part of the reason why you're struggling is because God is getting you ready to be the reconciler. Part of the reason why you're struggling is because you have rejected the ministry of reconciliation. Part of the reason why you're struggling is because you have refused to accept the fact that God wants you in the place that he has ordained for you to walk in. And so you wonder why everybody gets on your last nerve. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody this morning who find it difficult to be around people because people tend to get on your nerve? Could it be that your real issue is God's speaking to you and calling you to be a reconciler and you are refusing to trust God's plan or we don't trust his power? Because when it comes to his plan, we'll say, God, I, re I realize I need to love my sister. I need to love my brother. But God, you come live with her for a moment. <laughs> you, you, you come live with him for a moment. Hey God, if you come live with him, you, you'll come to the same conclusion I came to, that, that, that I don't want it. But trust God's power. First Corinthians chapter 12 says, for by one spirit we're all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, we have all been made to drink into one spirit. God's power will bring us together like never before. We've got to trust his power with that, with that most hellacious person. We've got to trust the power of God to change our heart, change our mind. If God did it for you, what he do for them? Can he do it for them? Yes, he can. So allow God's power to change the lives of those that you're, that you're struggling with. Yeah. God has called you to be a reconciler. Allow it to happen. So the first point, if you accept this ministry, if you want a new beginning, you trust God. The second one is to seek counsel. If you want to accept this new beginning, look for counsel. For there is no counsel where people fail or fall. But in the most little counselors, there's safety. Look, for folk who just want to do it their own way, they'll find themselves in trouble every time. I want this ministry of reconciliation. I want you to have this ministry of reconciliation. So let me offer you some counsel. The first thing I want to offer you is actively communicate. Look at somebody and say, we got to communicate. Communication is more than just talking. Communication is listening and giving. Talking and listening. Speaking and listening. Listen to what, what James says in uh, James 1.19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, 
Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Listen, you want to really cause some havoc among brothers and sisters? Be one of those folk who are always talking and never listening. Because when you find somebody who's always talking and never listening, those are the folk who get angry the quickest. They get mad so quick, they drop them back. Because you know what? They have not heard anything you say. Let me talk to somebody this morning. Part of our problem is, in our relationship-wise, this new beginning, is that we only listen to answer the question. We listen to respond. What that means is, you just wait on a break so you can say something. You haven't heard. You're listening for the break in the, in the action so you can say whatever it is you're going to say. But I want to encourage you this morning, if we would have a new beginning, let's listen more. Actively communicate. Slow to speak. Listen. Actively communicate. Listen. Offer consolation. If you want a new beginning, want to have this ministry of, of reconciliation, offer consolation. I won't read the whole text so you see it on the screen. But 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4 basically says this. God allows you to go through some stuff so you can comfort other folk. Yeah. There's some things you're dealing with. You went through those things so that there's somebody behind you that God wants you to speak to and say, baby, if I made it, you can make it too. All right. All right. You want to have the ministry of reconciliation? Learn to offer consolation. Offer consoling words. You want to seek counsel, the third piece of counsel I'll give you as I move on is to eradicate the barriers. He, that is Jesus, is our peace. He's made us both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Eradicate the barriers. Look around and see what barriers you can move. You keep waiting on God to move some barriers. There are some things that you can say, look, I'm, you know, I'm not going to let that bother me. I, I, so it's okay. It's okay. For, I, I, I don't like it, but I'm not going to let it bother me. I'm not letting this, this become a barrier between our relationship. There's some things just not worth fighting over, guys. There's some things that are just not worth fighting over. And if we're going to have this ministry of reconciliation, allow the Holy Spirit of God to take away the barriers that you've set up. Some of us have put some walls around us that an M1 tank cannot penetrate. <laughs> We've got these walls around us. We build up these barriers around us. Just start taking them down. You want to be, you want to be a reconciler? Take down those barriers that you put up. And as you take down those barriers you put up, you begin to notice other folk barriers are falling down too. <laughs> I'm done now. I want to tell you this. We must trust God. Will seek counsel. But thirdly, if you want to have a minister of reconciliation, make a plan. Somebody say, make a plan. Make a plan. The Lord answered me and said, Write a vision, make it plain. They read it and run. I back it two two. Make a plan. You want to have a minister of reconciliation? I really am finished. Make a plan. Go to the next one. Plan to pray. You want to have a ministry of reconciliation? Pray for those. Bless those that curse you. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Make a plan to pray. What do I mean by that? Real quick. Think about the person that you need to be reconciled to right now. Think about this ministry of reconciliation. And as you see that person's face, begin to pray for that person. Pray for them that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Look, if Jesus says to pray for those that curse you and those that despitefully use you, brothers, if sisters, if you want the ministry of reconciliation, learn to pray for those folks that you simply cannot stand. I know that's tough preaching for, for because yeah, we in the church and, they, and most of us won't admit to the fact that there are some folks that just break our nerves. 
we're so holy. We won't admit that. But can I be honest with you and tell you that, that, that there are some folk that, that when I see them coming, my flesh, <laughs> not them again. Y'all ain't got those kind of folk in your life. But I'm asking you, if you be honest with yourself and think about those folk, would you pray for them now? Jesus knew you would have them. That's why he said this. Bless, pray for them that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Jesus knew that you would have some folk that got on your nerve. And he says, pray for them. So if you want to minister reconciliation, make a plan to pray. Now why did I say make a plan to pray? Because it's got to be done intentionally. You've got to do it intentionally. You've got to make it in your mind, I'm going to pray for them. Because everything will come up so you won't pray for them. So you got to make a plan. Write the name on your, put it on your refrigerator. Every time you open your refrigerator, you see the name, pray for them. Put something in front of you. Make a plan to pray. Go to the next one quickly. Listen, plan to praise. For saying out there, some of you are, are myself together. But exhort one another so much more as you see the day approaching. But exhort one another. That simply says to encourage one another. I'm going to pray for them but then I'm going to encourage you. That person I told you earlier that you saw, I want you to think of a way to encourage that person. That person is the very last person that would expect you to do something nice for them. Think about that person. You got to go to work tomorrow and you're going to see you got that person in your face right now, right? Because you are here today, and you want the minister of reconciliation, how about saying something nice to that person tomorrow? Yeah. You hadn't done it since you've been on the job. <laughs> Matter of fact, every time y'all y'all had crosswords every time. But tomorrow, instead of having some cross to say, say something nice. Yeah. <laughs> that that is a very nice dress that you're wearing today. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going over to get some coffee. Would you like me to bring you bring bring you a cup tonight? They probably said, "Oh." oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I'm done. I'm done. But plan plan to offer some words of praise, some words of encouragement. Do you not know? that that person that you just cannot stand is such a grouch because that person never received any encouragement. They got to where they were on their own. They struggled and got there. At least that's what they say. Ain't nobody help me. I ain't helping nobody. When you come along and you just say something nice to them, a word of encouragement, you're amazed at what it'll do to break the ice. Finally, plan to produce. But well, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Could I ask you today if you want the minister of reconciliation, would you plan now to produce fruit? Would you plan now to produce the fruit of the Spirit? Allow the folk around you to see the fruit of the Spirit in your daily life. Allow them to see something different about you. You want the ministry of reconciliation? Produce fruit. Traditionally, I would say now, <coughs> extend the invitation and ask you to stand. That's what we would do traditionally. I'm going to do something different this morning. I want you to sit right where you are. I want you to bow your head. Bow your head with me this morning. We are beginning a month of new beginnings, discussions about new beginnings, teachings about new beginnings. I've done the best I could to say to you today that if we would have a new beginning, we must first deal with this idea of reconciliation. So while are you are there now with your head bowed and eyes closed, I want you to think about the fact 
that Jesus Christ came down to this earth, died on a cross, rose from the grave with all power in his hand, power to make you a reconciler. Now if he died, buried, and rose again, and gave you power to become a reconciler, my question is, would you accept his gift of the ministry of reconciliation? With head bowed and eyes closed now, I want you to reflect for a moment on what we've just talked about. I want to pray for you. Father, I come now to ask your blessings upon this congregation. Father, while we are doing real good as a congregation, in our individual lives, there are areas where we can improve. And so we want a new beginning. Begin us afresh. Help us to use the gift of reconciliation that you've given us. That we might reconcile ourselves to you, ourselves to ourself, and ourselves to our neighbor. Bless us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're standing now, all the building, we're standing. Oh, victory.